Okay, so we're just using a file that we created in a, a previous tutorial. If you don't already have this rigged character, you can download it in the description of this video or under resources slash example files at blendersensei.com. So what is weight painting? Well, to understand weight painting, we need to understand a little bit more about the relationship between this armature or bone rig, basically, that we created for this character and the actual mesh of the character itself. I'm going to switch the display of this armature from wire to octahedral because it's a little bit easier to uh, reference things like this. Basically with each one of these bones we're created a vertex group of points. For instance this uh, bone and the arm, all the its vertex group of vertices from the mesh will be you know from that arm area. So for instance if we click on the actual mesh object here and we go over in its uh, object properties and we select vertex groups you see that there are a ton of vertex groups one created for each bone in our uh, rig here if I were to select this bone turn on names we'll see that this is arm.r.001 and then I select my mesh again and I uh, click this vertex group that was created here I actually hit tab to go into edit mode and I deselect everything and then I select arm.r.001 and I click on select down here we'll see that this is the vertex group of points created for this bone. Now what weight painting does is weight painting allows us to soften and harden the amount of control and pressure of each one of these bones and its set of vertex groups such that we can move our character more organically. Okay, so that's enough jib jabber. I'm going to hit tab to go out of, go back into object mode and then I'm going to select the armature and I'm going to turn names off and I'm going to go ahead and switch the display back to wire. To get into weight painting mode, all we do is we select the actual mesh, not the armature, but the mesh itself, and then we want to change from object mode to weight paint. So immediately we see that everything is blue here except this selected bone up top of the head which is entirely red. Which the red indicates the amount of control of this bone uh, over the vertex points of mesh of that area. And you'll see it getting lighter and lighter to where it gets green and then fades into blue down at the neck. That is where the influence of this bone weakens so it will bend more uh, organically. So if I hit G to grab uh, this head here, you see that it bends rather nicely around that neck and that's because when we parented the armature and used autom uh, automatic weights, Blender does a really decent job of creating a very nice blended area between each of these bones. So the way in which we select different bones to, to see uh, its influence is by holding Alt and then clicking on the bone. So when we click on the neck bone, you'll see that there's only a, a little bit of very uh, stiff stiffness in the kind of in the center in the front of the neck there of that bone, and then the rest is pretty light, and that's perfect because that's how we want it, the level of influence we want. We can also, even though we're in weight paint mode, we have the ability to grab, rotate, and move any of these bones that we select to see how the weight painting is influencing the object. Of course, we want to put it all back. Um, don't have to worry, just tap A to select all the bones, then Alt R to put them uh, all back straight. And you really, you actually do, when, when you're in weight painting mode, you want to feel very liberal and very free to be able to move your character in these bones in whatever way you want and not be afraid to move them to see how these influences of the weight painting are really working. Okay, so before we actually start painting on here, I want to go ahead and under the multi-resolution modifier that we have set up, I have set up on this character, I'm going to go ahead and increase the preview sub uh, subdivision level from one up to well, we'll keep it at two. Whenever you are doing texture painting or weight painting or any or vertex painting or anything like that, it's good to get uh, your subdivision levels up uh, pretty high. Uh, otherwise the distribution when you're brushing and painting on might not be as smooth as it could be. Tap A to select all the bones and hit Alt R to reset everything. 
hold Alt and we click a bone like this arm and we see that the area of influence along its center is mostly and entirely influence. So if I hit G to grab that arm and I move it up, you'll see that it's moving that all fine. But if I were to hold Shift and paint along this arm, you'll see that it turns blue and also the mesh of the character seems to be stretching or sticking down here. And that's because every one of these bones, the area of influence, is basically, it considers its origin where the mesh was sitting naturally before you moved anything. So if we hold shift and we paint along all of this arm, it's going to uh, continue because the influence of this bone is, we're reducing the influence of this bone wherever we're holding shift and painting down. This arm is going to continue to move back towards its original position. Now, one thing that's happening is I'm only getting areas of the surface of this arm, but I can paint directly through it if we click this button down here, and then I tap X to increase the size of my brush and I hold shift and I continue to paint on this arm, you'll see the more I paint it, the more it's actually moving back to its original position there because the influence of that bone is now uh, less. So if I just uh, click on it in the regular fashion, you'll see it hop back to that bone because the influence is now increasing. I usually generally like to use my um, tablet for this and if we tap T, then we'll see a big list of controls and things we can do uh, while we're weight painting. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tilde key to maximize my 3D view window here. When you're uh, working uh, in weight painting, you want to have the strength down pretty low because it can really, really quickly go from red to green or vice versa if you're holding shift. Okay, so what do I mean by weight painting evolved? Well, when I first started weight painting in Blender, I noticed a, a terrible redundancy you have the options to increase the amount of weight that you're putting on in your brush. So for instance, right now I paint like that and it, and it immediately goes red, or if I hold shift it'll immediately go blue. In the default version of Blender, you're, you're stuck between some kind of weird purgatory of uh, controlling the amount of weight and the amount of strength you want to use in your brush strokes, which should only have to be one value you're ever pulling with. So I set this up in the way I set up all the, the brush systems in uh, Blender to work where shift has the negative or opposite result. So for instance, when you're sculpting, we learned that we can basically extrude the mesh by drawing on it, and if we hold shift, it will concave the mesh. So when we are in weight painting, likewise, we don't, deal, we don't have to deal with uh, controlling the weight settings and then also worrying about the strength settings for every time we want to do a different area of our weight painting of our object. We just hold shift to, um, to uh, decrease the influence of the weight painting and we just draw it regularly to uh, increase the influence. Typically, like I was saying, you want to work with your strength set pretty low so that you can get much more finer uh, detail in the various areas that need additional attention. In the last video when we were uh, creating this character rig, I spoke about how important it was to set everything up with the .l and .r uh, syntax that Blender likes to use. One of the reasons that's really important is so that we are able to do mirror editing on our bones in weight painting. We don't really have a lot of trouble areas with, with this model. The automatic weight painting worked out pretty good. However, if we were having, if we had a more complex model with hands and having to set up a hand rig, you do not want to have to go along and weight paint fingers and joints and things like that on one hand and then do the same exact thing over on the other. And setting up the bone.l slash dot r syntax that we set up when we set up this rig allows us to be able to avoid that entirely. If we, in this menu over here, all we do is select X mirror and topology mirror. And then now if I hit G to grab this hand, move it up like that or something. And then I say I alt select this bone again here. Well, let me actually, let me uh, raise that up a little bit more. So I alt select this bone here and I shift a paint on the influence of it, you'll see that the influence is working out the same for the right, the character's right side as well. So when I alt-click that, it will be the same 
as that. And that is in a massive time saver when you're weight painting and you're trying to uh, work some problems out. So one thing I might want to fix with weight painting on this character, I was noticing earlier, if I alt select this control bone here and I hit G to pick up this leg like this, I'll tap Z to constrain it, hit G again, and then put it like that. Around this area right here, that's a definitely not something I want. So that's something I would want to be able to fix for both sides of uh, this character simultaneously. I wouldn't want to have to fix that leg and then uh, do the other. But what I'll go ahead and do is I will pick this leg up also and move it in a different direction so I can see the influence that uh, it's having. So I'll hit G and move it up like that and then maybe move it out like that okay I definitely don't want this leg bending this waist like this so I'll alt select this bone here I don't want my influence to bleed all the way through in other words I don't want my brush to pass all the way through and mark everything all the way uh, through this object so I'm going to click this button down and hit X to decrease the size of my brush and I'm going to shift select on this area to lightly decrease the influence this bone has on the waist here and we'll see that uh, moving out and getting a little bit better and also getting a little bit better over here on this side. I'm actually going to scroll up here and decrease the strength even a little more so my effects will be even lighter when I hold shift on here. and may need a little bit more gonna let go of shift and just do some regular painting if I alt select this bottom bone here I'll probably need to decrease some of the influence on this as well okay so that's definitely a lot less screwy than it was so I'll tap A and then uh, hit Alt R to reset the bone position. Oh, I forgot I messed up these arms real bad, but we can fix that if I hold Alt and select this bone. What needs to happen here clearly is the influence of this bone over this area of the mesh needs to increase, so we'll just paint all this. And we want this to bleed straight through. I don't want this brush to just do on the surface of this arm. I want it to go all the way through the back. So I'll, I'll click down this button and just paint that through there and get the center of that uh, red because we need the, the control to be super high there and then now when I select this head and I move him around it's doing as it's supposed to and because we have X mirror and topology selected it uh, also does the corresponding bones just how we want so that's a basically a quick introduction to weight painting and how to use it there are of course other options and features and things like that but I don't ever use them uh, basically I've hammered everything out and to what I just explained so stick around for the next video